CW39 is honoring those who've served with a special presentation, Veterans Voices. Hear tales of days past and see the impact veterans are having in our communities. Watch Veterans Voices, Sunday, November 7th on CW39. Live, no wait weather and traffic on CW39 Houston. We've been fascinated by the scenes up high at the Wells Fargo Plaza in downtown Houston this morning. There's a live view from our Sky Tracker network camera. This is really cool because what we can do and provide for you this morning is a little bit of daylight and some sunshine because for most of you watching, you were probably below that cloud deck and in the fog and in the clouds this morning. So it's a gray start, but if you go high enough, it's a sunny start to your day today. We also saw the window washers starting their day up top of the building there. You saw that apparatus right there. That was the thing that was lowering them down and they can start cleaning some of those windows this morning. Interesting job to say the least. All right, our hour by hour forecast for the day today. We're looking at warm and muggy conditions pretty similar to yesterday. 70s for now, but we'll be in the mid and upper 80s by the afternoon. Yes, we have some fog right now. Give it another hour or two and it should wrap up. And as we go through the day, not only does the fog go away, but the clouds will gradually break up as well. And once we get more sunshine, that is also going to lead to some much warmer temperatures around here. We've got that dense fog advisory. Let me show you the map right here. It covers all of southeast Texas officially until 10 a.m., but it's certainly quite possible in that last 9 a.m. hour that we'll start to see some improvement in the visibilities. Many spots, though, are reporting very low visibilities near zero in several locations. This is just an example of what some of the recent reports are from some of the various weather stations across our area. Notice the Hobby Airport says a five mile visibility, but it's near zero at the Bush Airport. That's the kind of the nature of fog sometimes. It's dense in some spots, patchy, and uh, not too dense in some others. So something we'll continue to track here as we go through our morning. It seems this may have been having an impact on some of the drive in some areas this morning, Hannah, but even where the visibility is just fine, people are still banging into each other, it looks like. I'm telling you, Adam, today it's been one of those one accident clears, another one pops up. So let's get to the new ones. This is on the North Sam Houston Tollway near Ella Boulevard. It's a stalled vehicle in a center lane. So those cars that you see just completely stopped in one of those main lanes. That's going to be a nuisance. You can take the frontage road here, but we've had a lot of issues in this spot of town today. It's been the same areas, the Beltway on the north side and 45 the North Freeway. Now, luckily, the North Freeway accident we were following at Cavalcade has cleared, but let's talk about those traffic flows around town. If you are traveling near Alden going over towards Bush Airport, you're moving 13 miles per hour right now, and you can see a little bit of that traffic buildup uh, going inbound on 45. We'll take a look at that drive time in just a moment. Moment. We have another accident report on the southeast side of town. That accident on 225, it's cleared, no longer affecting you. That's why you see those red speeds. But what I have marked off is 610 at Old Galveston Road. Another accident report coming in here. So expect slow speeds to continue all in this area right around Galena Park. Here is what it looks like. It's an 18 wheeler involved with a uh, sedan. It looks like taking over center lane. The real bad news here is I'm not seeing any emergency vehicles on scene, meaning it's going to take a little bit longer for it to clear. Drive times now. Let's all take a deep breath. North Freeway is at an hour if you are traveling in Woodlands Parkway to downtown. 290, 288, looking kind of average, but still slow. The east side of town, you're completely in the red, no matter which freeway you're traveling in on, including the loop now, so extra time is needed. Katy Freeway is sitting at 48 minutes. East Tex Freeway is not too bad, honestly. 26 minutes there and 17 minutes if you are traveling in from Sugarland, Williams Trace to downtown. Sharon, over to you. All right, thank you, Hannah. The White House says the U.S. has donated more than 200 million COVID-19 shots to help vaccinate the rest of the world. The administration wants to actually lead the entire globe when it comes to vaccination campaigns, even as booster shots are rolled out right here in the U.S. The donation does include more than 120 million in surplus from the U.S. stockpile of vaccine shots. More than 100 countries have already received those American doses, and the U.S. is still the largest vaccine donor in the entire world. Well, India is celebrating after administering a billion doses of the COVID-19 vaccine, a major milestone for a country that was ravaged by the Delta variant earlier this year. About 75% of India's eligible adult population has received at least one dose. About 30% are fully vaccinated. Cases have even fallen sharply since the months earlier in the year where that Delta variant was infecting hundreds of thousands of people daily and hospitals were overwhelmed. 
Leaders now worry, though, about the gap between people who are fully immunized and those who have only one shot. Well, records now show that the Coast Guard received multiple reports of a possible oil spill off the coast of Southern California earlier than previously thought. The documents obtained by the Associated Press show the Coast Guard asked local authorities to investigate about 15 hours before its own personnel confirmed the crude oil spill. The Coast Guard received reports of a possible spill on the afternoon before they sent their own crews to start looking, which is earlier than they previously had said. Now, the oil spill from the underwater pipeline owned by the Houston based company has caused ecological damage up and down the entire coast. Well, now let's talk about our weather. Meteorologist Star Harvey has that and more. Star. Well, Sharon, if we've been out on the roads this morning or perhaps just took a view out your window, you've seen that fog that a lot of us are dealing with here throughout Southeast Texas, and it does continue. Uh, we're going to see that advisory go through at least the 10 o'clock hour. So if you're heading out to get our little ones to the bus stop, we still have about a half an hour before some of our schools start in here. Expect it to still possibly cause some issues for you on your commute. Otherwise, we're going to get those uh, cloudy skies there and our temperatures in the lower 70s. By the time this afternoon rolls around, we're going to see a lot of that energy start to clear out, making way for some more uh, partly cloudy skies and the chance for our temperatures to bounce all the way up to near that 90 mark. As Friday rolls around, we're also going to be factoring in again another chance for some of those partly sunny skies. That'll be the case to get us through our weekend. Our temperatures maintaining that mid to upper 80 feels. So all in all, it's going to be a hot one out there. And then as you see the weekend, we get through the chance with some of those isolated to scattered showers. A little bit of a break as the work week starts there, only from the chance of some rain. We do still see that heat making its way into our week. And by the time Wednesday rolls around, there's a little relief on the way and it comes in the front in the form of one of those fronts. It's going to bring with it the drop in some of our temperatures, but it is also going to bring up our rain chances. Hannah, give it and take there. I think people would take those lower temps at this point of the year. Accident on the southwest side of town still following this one. If you are traveling on the tollway going northbound, this is at Beach Nut. So the area here is right after you've exited 69, the Southwest Freeway, and maybe you're going up towards West Park or eventually I-10. You're down to about two main lanes. I mentioned this earlier, but Willcrest is a good alternate route for you, but I want you to pay attention to these traffic flows. You're moving pretty slow, around six miles per hour, all the way back towards 90. So Stafford commuters, even parts of Missouri City, be prepared to be moving pretty slow. Even the Southwest Freeway is being a little bit affected as you approach that interstate change. Will Chris goes right alongside the Beltway northbound. Again, it's going to be a much better option. You also have several lanes on that frontage road, but expect some slow speeds to linger here until that accident has cleared. Sharon, back over to you. All right, thank you. The Harris County Commissioner's Court unanimously approved an amendment to extend its support for the Houston Food Bank through the spring of 2022. CW39 Sydney Simone is joining us live to tell us more on just how important this decision really is for our entire community. Sydney. Good morning, Sharon. I'm standing inside the Houston Food Bank where a press conference will be held later this morning for a $47 million labor agreement with the hopes of gaining more volunteers. Right now, Harris County's funding is providing workers for the increased food distribution demand at the Houston Food Bank, but officials say they need more help from the community. The amendment for $3.9 million will provide 11.7 million meals as the Houston Food Bank is able to turn $1 into three meals. And now that we're in the midst of hurricane season, an ongoing pandemic and heading into the holiday season, food bank officials say it's imperative to have all hands on deck. That's why they're calling for more volunteers. Fortunately, during the pandemic, Harris County strengthened its support of the Houston Food Bank as a result of an increased need for food and fewer people to meet this need. Harris County has committed a total of $15.8 million in labor services. Officials say one of the problems in the community is Many people want to help, but they don't know how, one, their assistance can impact those in need, and two, where to find information on volunteering. In the meantime, Commissioners Rodney Ellis and Adrian Garcia will be here volunteering and talking about the importance of uh, volunteering and food insecurity. And right now I am joined with CEO Brian Green to talk about this new labor agreement and how it will be beneficial for the Houston Food Bank in getting those workers that are needed. 
Yeah, normally most of the physical work here is done by volunteers. That's one of the reasons why Houston Food Bank has grown to be the largest in the country because we have more volunteers by far than any other food bank. Our facility was designed to do that and the communities responded. Of course, the pandemic, that really hurt us significantly and Harris County stepped in and we enabled us to be able to hire people to, to make up the difference. Uh, we're still at significantly less volunteers than we're used to, and it's going to take a while for us to, I think, ramp up to our normal 85,000 volunteers a year. And in the meantime, this is going to make all the difference in the world for us to be able to continue to serve. Now, really quickly, where in terms of the chain of command do volunteers fall in terms of their help? How do they help? Uh, and where do they help? <laughs> well, volunteers actually serve all the way from the governance level. The board of directors are all volunteers, of course. Uh, we have volunteers in our leadership. We have volunteers who are actually working full time. And then we have, we really specialize in having a really simple, quick volunteer experience for somebody that can come in, work a four hour shift. They're, they're boxing or they're bagging or they're sorting. And in 20 minutes, they are productively working for the community. Perfect. Thank you so much. And you can find information on how to volunteer for the Houston Food Bank on our website, CW39.com. We'll have more for you after the break. Reporting live, CW39, Houston, Sydney Simone. Laughter. Attention neighbors, the purge has officially begun. What? Weeknights at 5 and 5.30 on CW39. Houston. Denny and Harrison, welcome to the Offer Pack family. Thanks. Yeah, we're excited. You guys ready? You know we're ready. You know at OfferPad, we're fast too. All online, cash offer in 24 hours. But we also like to make sure that each home selling experience feels special, easy, and different. You guys look awesome! OfferPad really is different. Yeah, awesome different. Home selling with OfferPad is awesome different. Request your free cash offer today at OfferPad.com. <laughs> doubly important this year. So make your celebrations doubly special with our award-winning cave-aged Murray's cheese. Kroger. Hey, you're right, we can't stop now. Let's take the special up a level with fresh, never frozen prime beef. Still not special enough? Add some surf to that turf with our sustainably caught seafood. Turn your taste buds up to 11 and have a doubly special holiday with Kroger. Fresh for everyone. Dyson's latest vacuum is the only one to use a laser. It reveals invisible dust. Carbon fiber filaments pick up those microscopic particles. Suction is increased when needed. This special sensor counts each particle size and gives you scientific proof. While this hyperdimia motor generates 230 air watts of suction for the most powerful deep clean. By direct from the people who made it. When shopping for a new vehicle, how do you know which brand you can trust? With Subaru, you get Kelly Blue Book's most trusted brand seven years in a row. In fact, Subaru has won most trusted brand for more consecutive years than any other brand. No wonder Kelly Blue Book also picked Subaru as their best overall brand once again. It's easy to love a brand you can trust. It's easy to love a Subaru. Maintain the love of your new Subaru with two years of complimentary maintenance. This portion of No Wade Weather and Traffic is brought to you by Mokarum Law Firm. Injured? Call 713-900-2222. Mokarum Law Firm. Looking for something spooky to do this weekend? I've got you covered. There are multiple fall festivals going on in town. Let's start with what is, in my opinion, the spookiest of them all. The Varner Hog Plantation Historic Site will be hosting Ghost Along the Brazos this Saturday from 6 to 11 p.m. Take an eerie stroll through the plantation and listen to tales about the ghostly heritage of the area. Be careful, in the haunted woods you may encounter a few unexpected guests. Admission is $10 per person. Children 5 and under get in for free. For a little something more lighthearted, you can check out the third annual Vegan State Fair 
Fall Festival and Pumpkin Patch at Memorial Park. This Saturday's event runs from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Kids five and under get in for free. Get your flow on with outdoor yoga classes, boogie down with hocus pocus performances and jam to live music. Over 50 vendors will be there from all over Texas, along with a costume contest, face painting and pumpkin patch photo ops. Coming up, I'll be going over some local pumpkin patches throughout the area that you don't want to miss before the season is over. Now this weekend, thankfully, you won't have to worry about having to cover up those costumes with jackets now, Adam, uh, because those temperatures are going to be a little on the warmer side, but you might have to have an umbrella toting around in your uh, your jack-o'-lantern. Do people still carry around those jack-o'-lanterns? Sure. Whenever they go trick-or-treating? Because I used to have those as yeah. a kid. <laughs> yeah, my kids do that. Or just okay, like a cool. bag or something. It's been, it's been a while since I've been knocking door to door. Yeah. Hey, you got some I, candy? They're not going to be the one carrying the umbrella, though. I, that's going to be me carrying all their stuff. Usually yes. How it goes. But yes. Parents so, grab the umbrella that, for That's what your we do. Kids. That's like half of our purpose for our kids is just carry their stuff around. <laughs> uh, so we're looking at, yes, that possibility for some rain this weekend. We'll get to that in a second. But let me show you this live view first as we start with our Sky Tracker Network shot of the Denver Sky skyline this morning. Beautiful sunrise there. I just wanted to show you that because we can't see a whole lot of sun here in Houston this morning. Let me switch you over now to our Sky Tracker uh, network camera time lapse here at the Wells Fargo Plaza. And if you go high enough, actually, you do see some sun. Now, again, a lot of low cloud deck and fog this morning, but way up high. We got a view of that sun here in Houston this morning as well. And so fog continues to be our main story right now. We have a dense fog advisory for all of us goes until 10 a.m. this morning. You can see how there are a few locations, for example, the Hobby Airport, where you can see just fine five mile visibility there, but there are many spots where there's pretty low visibility across our area. So we have the fog we're dealing with right now, not everywhere, but in some spots. It'll gradually clear later this morning, and then the clouds gradually clear later today, and a warm and humid day is set for us today and for several more days ahead. Also, rain starting to get back into our area, especially by this weekend, it looks like. Now, we have a front north of us today, and behind this front, it is cooler and drier, but that's not making it here. Could be close to us by tomorrow morning. Maybe we get an isolated shower from that. Otherwise, it's pretty dry on Friday. Now, by the weekend, a disturbance comes in from the Gulf, and you see what happens here. Some scattered showers and storms possible on Saturday. As for our temperatures, we're looking at that heat today with Highs in the upper part of the 80s. That's just part of the story, though. When you factor in the humidity, this is what it's going to feel like. Feeling like over 90 degrees today. Meanwhile, out on the West Coast, a big weather story going on now and for the next several days is a very wet weather pattern. We talked about it yesterday. An atmospheric river is setting up in California. Let's go right now to meteorologist Adam Epstein at our sister station in Sacramento for more on that. After a disappointing water year last season, this year we're starting off on the right foot. We have a stream of moisture coming in from the Pacific right here. If you follow the trail of clouds, and this is what we call an atmospheric river, which is transporting moisture from one area to another. And it's along this thin corridor that shows up really nicely on this graphic. And it's headed squarely for Central California, right to the San Francisco, Sacramento region. And this is what we so desperately need. And as this sinks a little bit further to the south over the next couple of days, another atmospheric river comes behind it to replace it so we get multiple surges of moisture and rounds of rain and over the next seven days we're seeing a very significant amount of rainfall in northern california four to eight inches of rain meanwhile a bit further to the south one to four inches of rain if sacramento does get four inches of rain over the next seven days it means a lot to us just how significant would that be well to date sacramento has only received 4.57 inches of rain so this could quite literally double our rain output and put us in good standing for ending five fire season, but does this help with the drought? It's a drop in the bucket. Definitely not going to fix our drought anytime soon. That is a dire situation here in Sacramento. I'm Fox 40 meteorologist Adam Epstein. Well, think about that so far this year, Sacramento for the entire year has only had four and a half inches of rain. We get that here in like an hour or two sometimes in Houston, and so it's a different story there. But yes, the weather turning around for them. Hopefully, like he said, maybe a, a helping the drought a little, but it's mm -hmm. not going to totally fix it. Hannah. Yeah, that was the thing that stood out the most to me just now, Adam. A drop in the bucket is what he said. I don't think you're going to be hearing their traffic anchor say anything about one to two inches of rain per hour is what the streets can hold in Sacramento. Who's to say what they can hold? 610 the South Loop at 225, not dealing with an accident anymore, but we are still seeing slow speeds. This is that interchange ramp, and then you have your main lanes. We had an accident here earlier. We actually had two accidents in this area, so that's definitely not a 
good thing for you to see. Extra time still needed, but overall we should begin to see those speeds pick back up. So let's check back in on the West Sam Houston Tollway over near Beach Nut, where we've been following a big accident going northbound. That has finally cleared just within the last couple of minutes. So I wouldn't expect the speeds to be quite as clear or as fast just yet. You can still use that alternate route of Wilchrist if you would like to. On the North Tollway near 45 or Ella Boulevard, there was a stalled vehicle in the center lane, but it has been cleared uh, just a few minutes ago as well. I'm still seeing reports though from Transtar that there is some issue here, so I'm switching the cameras around to see if we can spot any flashing lights. Doesn't look like we have access to those cameras. Here's what it looks like at Green's Crossing. I'll keep checking back in here. If you want an alternate route, Aldine Bender is a good one. Extra time needed, especially for those of you traveling in the eastbound main lanes going over towards the Hardy Toll Road, if that is where your commute is taking you this morning. Sharon, over to you. All right, thank you, Hannah. We continue our Veterans Day celebration by highlighting veterans throughout our community. CW 39's Gianella Giglino spoke with one of those truly important veterans who has dedicated his life to helping disabled vets. Gianella? Christopher Meyer is a veteran and a family law attorney who has dedicated his life to helping others just like him. He shared his story with me and he also shared what his secret to a happy life is. Christopher Meyer can be found in a courtroom fighting for his clients or in his office reviewing cases. But he was once a college freshman who lived through 9-11 and enlisted in the Army right after. He remembers that time in his life as difficult. He says wars don't end as soon as you leave the battlefield. Sometimes the hardest fight comes after. I still remember um, vivid memories of uh, a rocket attack uh, would not leave a lot of, you know, remembering the stressful event. It, it was, it would not go away. I remember um, having, avoiding certain things, uh, being very, you know, hyper, hyper vigilant. Through therapy provided by the VA and meditation, Christopher was able to find his purpose, serving his community. Christopher began advocating for veterans after several years and many calls to legislators. In 2016, he was able to get Houston Metro to give bus and rail rides to disabled veterans for free. That was kind of probably one of my more defining moments where I was able to use my legal education to bring a, a meaningful benefit. Christopher says dedicating his life to helping others has made him realize that the secret to life is simple. Make someone happy and that happiness will follow you. And for example, after Hurricane Harvey, I would go help people that I didn't even know, you know, fix their homes. And, it, you know, I felt, I felt great. To find more Veterans Voices stories, log on to our website, CW39.com. Reporting live in studio, Janella Giglino, CW39 Houston. I was exploring dimensional kinematics. Admit it, he's adopted. How can I be adopted when I have a twin sister? Think, monkey. Think. Young Sheldon, tonight at 6 and 6.30 on CW39. Houston. Car wrecks, truck accidents, DWI. You never need an appointment. We can help you right now. You really need a lawyer that you can trust. Dial 713 call me. It's starting to cool off and our cozy home event at American Furniture Warehouse has inviting furniture for you to discover this fall. This time of year is made for meals with family and friends and our large selection of dining sets will help you set the table for a festive autumn retreat. You're sure to find the perfect dining room for a warm gathering. Our stocked warehouses are ready for pickup today or delivery with our platinum delivery service. Come on down to any American Furniture Warehouse location or see our magnificent spread online at AFW.com. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. Listen, after a serious accident, it's time to call Terry Bryant. You're getting medical care, but how will you pay for it? You might need time off work. How will you cover it? You're at the mercy of a big insurance company. How can you fight back? Make the call to help you move forward. Call board certified lawyer and former judge Terry Bryant. 713-973-8888. You know how we're not supposed to reinvent the wheel? Mm -hmm. and why is it good that we keep reinventing the tire? And why is it bad to have your wheels spinning, but it's good to keep your wheels turning? 
I don't know. It sounds like a loophole. Right now at NTB, save up to $100 on four select tires, including the Continental Sure Contact LX. Oh, I get it. Loophole. Like a tire. <laughs> I, I guess. Never stop showing up. Never stop creating like it's your last shot to prove yourself all over again. Always give them style, grace, beauty. Keep making new waves for the people to dance to, like the Cadillac Escalade. We are luxury. We are the ultimate vibe. Ya tu sabe. Let's shoot. If you've been seriously injured in an accident, we can help you right now. We've won over $750 million for our clients. Call attorney Steve Lee right now. You really need a lawyer that you can trust. Dial 713 call me. Houston, we're bringing you the best at 9. Watch ABC 13 Eyewitness News at 9 on CW 39 every night. I'm not in the studio. I do love to spend my time giving back to the community. So for me yesterday, that meant taking a trip over to Drew Academy to speak with a group of middle schoolers. I shared with them some details on what it's like to work as a meteorologist, but they also schooled me a little. Here. Good morning. Good morning. What grade are you all? Seven. Seven. Y'all are practically grown in here. How many of you guys watch the news? What's your name? Dante? All right, Dante, I'm gonna have some questions for you since you're sitting front row in the center. Can anybody tell me what meteorology is? That's right, I study the weather. So I work every day, Monday through Friday, and I get on TV and I get to tell you guys, again, what the weather is gonna be. You know if it's gonna rain, you know if it's gonna snow, you know if a hurricane is coming your way and how bad it's gonna be. You guys are in the seventh grade, which means y'all got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, y'all a lot, five years. Y'all got five more years before y'all get done through high school. So I came from a community where a lot of people weren't doing what I was doing. And so to be able to get up every day and inspire people that come back from where I come back from and they see like, hey, this girl came from the same neighborhood as me and she can do this, so can I. I had such a great time and of course gained a bunch of new friends. So big shout out to the students and the entire staff for a very big welcome at Drew Academy. We're CW 39 Houston, no wait weather and traffic. You've got enough to think about maintaining. Good thing the all new 2022 Volkswagen Taos has a lower cost of maintenance than Honda CRV. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the all new 2022 Taos S for just $229 a month. Goodbye and the spam calls. Hello to a phone plan with built-in spam blocking. See you later, networks that are unsaved. Hello, built-in VPN. Now the networks I join are private. So long, hackers and trackers finding my personal information. Hello to a phone plan that keeps me safe and secure. Goodbye, everything you can. Hello, Google Fi, a phone plan that can. It's time to make your Medicare choices for 2022. And a smart choice begins with the right information. Your free booklet from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas will show you how you can have all of your Medicare benefits in one simple plan with a monthly premium as low as $0. That's right, $0. And that includes low co-pays for doctor's office visits. Call 1-877-220-8257 now to request your free information with no obligation. See how you can have all of your Medicare benefits in one simple plan, plus prescription drug coverage with $0 copays for some drugs at preferred pharmacies. Your $0 plan may include dental, vision, hearing benefits, urgent care virtual visits, and more. Discover the benefit of blue. Call 1-877-220-8257 now to request your free information. 
Hey Houston, I'm Dr. Andrew Orton, board certified plastic surgeon and host of The Doctors. If you've tried every fad diet and extreme workout and still struggle with stubborn body fat, then it's time you call Sotobello. I've personally performed thousands of body fat removal procedures and the results I've seen achieved by the highly skilled experts at Sotobello are truly outstanding. Sonobello's board-certified surgeons use micro-laser technology to safely target and remove your diet-resistant fat cells permanently. Eliminate fat on your stomach, thighs, and back. Don't wait, Houston. Schedule your free, no-obligation consultation now. And find out how you can get $250 off instantly. With Sonobello, you can permanently remove stubborn fat and in just one visit. Call 1-888-596-0691 or go to sonobello.com. You've got enough to think about maintaining. Good thing the 2021 Volkswagen Atlas and Atlas Crossport have a lower cost of maintenance than Toyota Highlander. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and lease the spacious and refined 2021 Atlas SE Tech for just $4.19 a month. Okay, live view right now from our SkyTracker network camera. Now that's at the Wells Fargo Plaza on top of the building where you can see the sun and also some of those low clouds and that fog drifting through. Boy, that is like a, we said this earlier, a spooky scene, like a Hollywood or a that's Halloween the, that's Hollywood That's a start set. to a horror movie. Yeah, right? Except it needs to be a little bit darker, but the way that fog just kind of went up there near the sun just now, mm -hmm. I, I that's kind of creepy. Is someone about to scare me or like something? It, like is Michael know. Myers going to walk by? Or, I mean, he was on the beach not long ago. That's so. true. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Galveston beaches have yeah. seen some things. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, I don't know where to go from that. I, know, I don't either. Um, it's October. We have all the spooky feels yes. and the fog is definitely sending that message home. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so we can also show you another view of it down at the ground on some of the roads and what some of our commuters are dealing with this morning. And Hannah, we'll get to you for traffic in a moment. But I just want to share this Transtar camera view because that is the fog we are seeing and it's rather dense in some spots. And so that could be playing a role in slowing things down a little bit more for the morning drive this morning. Dense fog advisory for all of us until 10 a.m., but we should start to see some improvement within the next hour, so it might not be totally foggy right up until 10. As those temps start warming, the fog should begin to lift a little bit. Here's a look at the visibilities, though. We have many areas, not just in, but outside of Houston as well, where the visibilities are rather low right now, and so something we're just gonna have to deal with for a little while longer. Then for the rest of the day, we're gonna have to deal with a combination of heat and humidity. We're in the 70s in many spots right now, and as we work our way into the afternoon, Temps are going to rise into to the uh, mid and probably even some upper 80s. And then when you factor in the humidity, it'll be feeling like the low 90s today. That is kind of spooky as well. The fact that it's that hot and muggy outside, not a whole lot of change there for a while. You'll see that on the seven day forecast in a few minutes. Hannah, <laughs> that number will scare you this yeah. time of year. That's for sure. Hey, a little bit further backed up behind that camera that you just showed Adam. Uh, this is that Veterans Memorial, so it's actually approaching the area close to Greens Point near 45. There's an accident there, so I wanted to show you. You also get a good sense of the fog on the north side of town still. We've had a number of issues on the Beltway on the north side of town. So one issue has caused some other ones. People not driving slow enough. Remember to move over and slow down. Let's go ahead and show you those traffic flows, but here's a look at the rest of Houston. Definitely still seeing a lot of red. If I do have good news for you, it's the fact that we're following one active accident at 832. Let's mark it down. That's a good sign. 11 miles per hour, though, in between 249 going over towards 45, the North Freeway. Speaking of the North Freeway, last time we checked in on this number, it was at 60 minutes, one hour to make it in from Woodlands Parkway to downtown. Now, if you look up at your screen, it's down to 41 minutes. We are seeing some clearing out happening, maybe not so much with the fog, but definitely on the roads. Onto the east side, 225 is getting a little bit better. We had an accident earlier there. Katy Freeway, East Tex Freeway, and the Southwest Freeway, not actually the problem spots this morning, and we will definitely take that. But here's what maybe a lot of people really want to know. We're talking about sports now. The Astros have taken home field advantage back with a 9-1 win in Game 5 of the American League Championship Series against the Red Sox. 
Everything seemed like it was clicking last night for the Strohs, and that includes the pitching. Finally, Framber Valdez stepped up last night, going eight innings, giving up just one run. But I want you to listen to this stat. He is the first Astros starting pitcher this series to last longer than two innings. So hopefully this means they've turned that around. The series is back here in Houston on Friday, and if they win, they will clinch a spot back in the World Series. So and a lot of people will be focused on that game, Sharon, tomorrow night. Going to be a big one, keeping those fingers crossed. Thank you so much, Hannah. New this morning, the White House is unveiling plans to roll out the coronavirus vaccine for children. In fact, the Biden administration says kids ages 5 to 11 could get the shot just as soon as the FDA okays it. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer joins us again live this morning with more details. And Kelly, how soon are we talking about for these kids? Yeah, so the, the, the vaccines could be distributed uh, as soon as the first week of November, and these vaccines will have enough doses for every child, they say, as many as 28 million children. Soon children could be able to get the COVID-19 shot. Over the past several weeks, we've been working closely with governors, pediatricians, pharmacies, community health centers, rural health centers and other vaccine providers to prepare for this moment. Places from pharmacies to pediatricians offices will get 25,000 specially packaged doses reduced for kids ages 5 to 11. We'll be ready to vaccinate kids. Dr. Anthony Fauci says vaccinating such a large portion of the population could have an even bigger impact on reducing the spread of the virus. If we can get the overwhelming majority of those 28 million children vaccinated, I think that would play a major role in diminishing the spread of infection in the community. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, 6 million children in the U.S. have been infected, 1 million of them since early September. Health officials believe expanding the vaccine outreach will help protect more kids and their parents. In the era of Delta, children get infected as readily as adults do, and they transmit the infection as readily as the adults do. And Sharon, federal regulators are weighing the effectiveness of those smaller doses over the next two weeks. And if the FDA and CDC give their final seal of approval, millions of doses could be shipped out to providers across the country. Question for you, Kelly, how will they actually distribute to kids? Because I know they had large vaccination sites for adults, but that may not be the same for the kids, right? Yeah, exactly. The White House is taking a different approach here. They're looking at more intimate settings like doctor's offices or pediatrician's offices over those ma the mass vaccination sites that you mentioned we saw used last spring for adults. They also are looking to do this in schools, and they're doing that with the help from FEMA. They're looking to get hundreds of schools and community-based clinics stocked up with the vaccine for these kids. All right, good to know. Kelly Meyer reporting live for us once again from Washington, D.C. Great job as always and appreciate all the great information as well. Now back at home, we're going to talk about our weather. Meteorologist Star Harvey has a look at what's going on. What's going on? Well, it's fog, definitely. <laughs> it's right here. Just gave yes. it away, right? <laughs> That's been the story this morning, Sharon. We've been talking about it, that dense fog advisory that will continue until about 10 a.m. throughout some areas here in southeast Texas. So if you had plans on getting out in these roads, just we want to make sure you have a few helpful tips. One of them is making sure to keep your low beams on. Don't get that confused with your high beams. It's going to help you while you're out there. Also, use your fog lights. A lot of vehicles do not have those. It's good to go ahead and verify if you do, maybe before even hopping into your car. I did this yesterday. Also, you want to make sure to slow down, take your time. Also, put your phones away. That's going to be helpful if you're out in these type of conditions as well. Again, don't use those high beam headlights. We want to make sure that we're not confusing them with those low beams there. That could be pretty dangerous. Also, avoid overtaking other cars on the road. Take our time. Let's not do any swerving and trying to beat the other cars there on the road. So we do have some temperatures that we're probably not going to be able to beat unless you're indoors, maybe under some AC because we are headed towards some upper 80s today. We do get to see that that dense fog will slowly and surely start to wear off there. Likely to see a dose of some sunshine. We're going to get through uh, the rest of the week like this and into our weekend as well, where we see those partly sunny skies and the chance for our temperatures to remain on the warm side. We'll be welcoming in also some isolated showers as well as some scattered showers by the time Saturday rolls around. No complete uh, washouts or widespread activity. We get into Monday near that 90 mark and a little relief headed in towards the middle of next.
next week, and it comes in the form of a cold front. I've been joking with Hannah about this all morning. It is a real cold front, mm -hmm. meaning it's going to give us some, some more pleasant conditions to deal with if we have outdoor plans, Hannah. Fall fields. I like it when the meteorologists say fall fields, and yes, a real one as opposed to those other ones in Houston where we're like, wait, that's what we call a cold front? Yes, it's a scientific there. I send the Katy Freeway near Mason Road. Take a look at this. So out in Katy this morning, definitely still seeing that fog on the roads. No accidents reported. Even those traffic flows looking pretty good on the far west side. I want to check in elsewhere where we had four accidents earlier this morning at one point, all at different times. On the North Freeway, still moving 17 miles per hour. I showed you that drive time. It's looking much better. You're around 40 minutes in from the woodlands. 10 miles per hour on I-10 going into town. Uh, just a normal slow spot for us there. Not too concerned. I did have a report of a stalled vehicle near 69 in I-10, but that has cleared. Checking back in on the East Loop. We had an accident here near Old Galveston Road, slowing down both 225 commuters and the East Loop. Still moving around 26 miles per hour this morning. If you don't want to take that, you can always use 90 as your alternate, but this speed is going back up, even though it's uh, moving slow pretty uh, for the time being, but we'll keep checking back on it for you. You're watching CW 39 Houston, no wait weather and traffic. Roads are busy again. We're in the thick of it daily to help you navigate so you'll never be late for work. No wait weather and traffic on CW 39. Creating a cozy reading corner is a great way to personalize an area for reading and relaxing. In this space, we've opted for a simple setup that's big on style and customizable for the season. As always, you can find everything in this room at American Furniture Warehouse. Why just fight breast cancer when you can outsmart it? At Houston Methodist, we're developing AI to assess breast cancer risk with greater accuracy. We're creating nano devices to directly treat tumors minimizing side effects and repairing nerves during breast reconstruction restoring feeling to your chest that's the difference between practicing medicine and leading it houston methodist leading medicine hi honey oh i missed you you just want a video call the kids okay hush little baby don't say a word but if slow upload speeds turn your good you night call into an accidental me. horror movie can you hear me? Shut it down. Just remember, you're oh not a goodness. bad mom. Yes. You just need better internet. AT&T Fiber delivers faster upload speeds for more reliable video calls. Get AT&T Fiber, plans starting at $35 a month for a year. Limited availability in select areas. Call 1-877-ONLY-ATT. If you love that chicken from Popeye's, you'll love our nuggets. They're crispy, juicy, and packed with our signature home-style Louisiana flavor. Try an eight-piece today for $3.99. Always ready, always there. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. You know how we're not supposed to reinvent the wheel? Mm-hmm. And why is it good that we keep reinventing the tire? And why is it bad to have your wheels spinning, but it's good to keep your wheels turning? I don't know, it sounds like a loophole. Right now at NTB, save up to $100 on four select tires, including the Continental Sure Contact LX. Oh, I get it, loophole, like a tire. <laughs> I, I guess. It is 842 and welcome back everyone. The FBI has confirmed that potential human remains have been found in a Florida reserve where authorities have been searching for Brian Laundry. Personal items also believed to belong to him were found in that same area. News Nation correspondent Michael Shore is joining us live in Northport, Florida with the latest on the story. And if I remember correctly, that's about an hour north of Fort Myers. And tell us what you know at this point, Michael. 
Uh, what, well, what we do know now is that the FBI is on the scene there. They've got, uh, they've got the canine units. They have more investigators out there looking through the, the reserve there to see if there's any more evidence that they didn't get yesterday. The other thing that's very important to remember, this is an active homicide investigation to the death of Gabby Petito. So they're still trying to see if there was any more evidence that could possibly link uh, Brian Laundry to the death of his, uh, of his fiance. Say uh, she, of course, uh, found dead at, at, in, on September 19th in Wyoming, and so I, I think it's important that that people realize that that's what the FBI is doing, as well as, of course, processing everything that they found yesterday, most especially the remains, to see if they can make a positive identification. Uh, the the Laundry family attorney Stephen Bertolino last night saying that in all probability those were the remains of Brian Laundry, but they wait now for the FBI to confirm that and there's no saying how long that could take. Uh, they found personal effects in both a backpack and what's called a dry bag, which is something that campers and hikers take out with them. And the presumption is that that would keep things dry if there was anything. Let's say it was a notebook. Let's say it was, uh, you know, some confession from Brian Laundry. Maybe it was a suicide note. We don't know that this, the, the, the remains that were found were A, Brian Laundry's, or that they weren't a homicide, natural causes. But uh, there is the assumption that it, it may have been a suicide. If those things are in, in, in those uh, personal effects that were found yesterday, it would obviously help in the investigation to the death of Gabby Petito, as well as finding out what the fate of Brian Laundrie was. So here at the house in Northport, we have not seen the Laundries. The Laundries have not over the last several weeks uh, and since this investigation started spoken to the media when they've left their home. Uh, we don't expect that to happen until there's some sort of confirmation of what they found yesterday. That according to, to the lawyer, but we stay and we wait. Back to you, Sharon. Michael, quick question for you. I know there was some concern that the scene may have been contaminated by, uh, of course, Brian Laundrie's father, who had turned over some evidence as well. What are we hearing about that? Well, what we do know is that when they went into the, the, the reserve yesterday, that Brian Laundrie's father and mother were there with some investigators. Uh, Brian, they all sort of spread out as they were looking. Brian Laundrie's father was the one who found one of the bags. I believe it was the dry bag. And then he told the police he wasn't with them when it was found, but the authorities were then notified they had all spread out. And it's a very, very big place. He told them that he had found this. They had found a backpack near the backpack, uh, we believe, is where they found the remains. One thing also to remember here is uh, that that it was a very, very wet in that in that part of the state. Uh, it has dried significantly over the last three weeks, which could have revealed those remains. And and Chris Laundry, you know, a lot of people wondering if Chris Laundry planted that bag. Uh, the lawyer last night uh, saying that no, there's no way that he could have planted that bag. The media was watching. Uh, the, the authorities were there. Uh, that bag was not planted, and and he also said that he didn't know what that would uh, what that would do by planting that there. So. There are a lot of questions still to be answered in the house behind me, but for the for the most part, everyone waiting for the big answer, which is were those remains those of Brian Laundry? So Come many on. pieces to this involved, and Michael Short, thank you so much for trying to break it down for us so we can all understand it as well. Great job as always. Now back here at home, of course, we are watching our weather, and I know you you and Hannah were talking earlier about the fog, and and looks like a movie. Now there are two movies called The Fog, okay. and this reminds me very clearly of both of them. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you saying that reminds me of a movie called The Blob too. Which <laughs> that like, too. That's, yes. That's old, but I feel like the fog is like this blob just kind of moving over Houston right now. Look at these cars just driving in into the abyss right there. This is a look at I-10, the Transar camera there near Katy. Meanwhile, if you go far enough up in the sky, you can actually see a good deal of sunshine. Here's the Wells Fargo Plaza camera, a time lapse over the last hour. So the top of the building here right on the edge of the clouds and then the blue sky up further higher and you can see the sun right there. So some folks getting a decent view of that sunshine this morning. And there's even a few parts of town where there's some blue sky uh, peeking through as well. Notice the Hobby Airport to Pearland. The visibilities are just fine right there, but there are still several other locations, especially where we have these red colors, where there are those low visibilities and that dense fog that we're dealing with this morning. We have a dense fog advisory that goes until 10 a.m. So fog for now, gradual clearing, not just in the fog, but also clouds should break up later today. Once that happens, it'll be very warm and certainly on the humid side. So the 80s today will feel like 90 or hotter. Rain returning soon. That's another part of our story. It looks like this weekend we may have to dodge a few showers or thunderstorms scattered in nature. There's a front north of us that really won't have an impact on our area other than potentially helping to pop 
a couple of really isolated showers tomorrow morning, but it stays north of us, so we stay warm and humid on our Friday and this weekend. It'll be warm and muggy as well. But look at the scattered rain coming through our area on Saturday and Sunday will be another uh, type of situation to watch out for as well. Well, tomorrow I want to share this with you. The Astros were happy about this coming back home to play a game. Uh, ALCS game six and temperatures will be in the upper 70s for first pitch, which is at 708. Hey, I, now I'm laughing because Hannah, <laughs> Hannah watched me try to. I had an obstacle course to get over here. And <laughs> the things you don't see on TV <laughs> is like weaving through the cameras yeah. here. OK, so it's the sports block as we're going to call it now. Yeah. We're talking about the Astros that game tomorrow night, but we also have our pro football challenge on CW39.com. You can still take part. I am not doing so good. You're doing you're still leading our VIP section with the Houston Sports Show people. Yeah. You got 64 out of however many games have been played. It's, I don't know how many, but uh, but yeah, last week was okay. Yeah. We, I know this was last week was the one where we had the most different picks between. Yes, the we two did, and I'm and pretty sure you did them. You got them all right, right? It, not all, but oh, okay. but it worked in my favor. Yeah, I, okay. I think you were trying to go off a little bit, and had it worked for you, you would have jumped into yeah. the lead. But well, there were a lot of overtime games last week yeah. too, and so that's kind of one of those. It's going to go either way. Uh, I feel uh, I don't even know how I feel about this week's uh -huh. game tonight. It's okay. Denver at Cleveland. You and I both got the same ones uh, pick the same teams there right I haven't actually looked to see if we're different oh you picked Kansas City so, but uh, this is the one of those where I was on the fence because Tennessee has looked really good mm -hmm. they're at home but it's Kansas City I mean they can win any game okay I feel so like. I went back and I looked at who they've uh, beaten this year and uh -huh. it's they're not very good teams yeah. so I'm starting to lose a little bit of hope in Patrick Mahomes there in okay. KC uh, let's see, but uh, Green Bay <laughs> oh I picked Atlanta I figured this would be one you might have different because well, Miami's not great but I'm thinking they might just pull it off. Here. Neither team here is very great, so right. I, I don't expect that one's going to be a shocker to me. Okay. Uh, I had a hard time with Cincinnati. Did you hear Joe Burrow is on voice rest? No, I did not. The quarterback for the Bengals is okay. on voice rest. He has some sort of issue with his throat. Oh. <laughs> not that he can't keep throwing, but, but to it, communicate. To communicate. And, and they're the the away team there, so mm -hmm. it's going to be loud when they're on offense. Okay, that's so interesting. So we both pick though. Baltimore. All right. uh, we have very similar picks here. Arizona on our little thing, our percentage chance for Arizona to beat Houston. What are the odds? 99% yeah. chance. Hmm. So Arizona is undefeated, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and Houston is, is far from undefeated. Far from uh, undefeated, but they're also, Arizona is undefeated with J.J. Watt and DeAndre Hopkins. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, some that's familiar gonna, names there. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one for Astros I, fans, I think the Astros, point, Texans fans yeah, to watch. I think the point spread on that one is like 17 or 17 oh, and a half wow. or something, so that's that brutal. tells you, yeah. So we have the other ones are the same. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. not too bad. We're pretty similar. We yeah. just have a couple ones different. We'll see again. Uh, game is tonight with, between Denver and uh, Cleveland, but you can see how we do with our picks throughout the rest of the weekend and still sign up CW39.com. Let's talk about traffic right now. When I go show you some slow spots around Houston. In fact, I do want to show you a slow spot that's going to pop up tomorrow night. How do I know that already? Well, it's because it's weekend road construction. Let's show you at 610 the South Loop westbound between 225 going over towards 45 will be completely closed beginning at 9 p.m. Friday night continuously closed until Monday morning at 5 a.m. You can take Griggs Road, which is going to be just north of those main lanes. If you're taking 225, you can head up on Lawndale Street to Griggs and then you can hop on 45 from there, depending on where you are going. Just be prepared to see slow speeds here. It's a new spot. We normally talk about the West Loop, but South Loop commuters around South Houston, you're going to need to plan that extra time. All of this information is listed on our website right now. Head over to CW39.com for that. You're watching CW 39 Houston, no wait, weather and traffic.